Hello, my name is Noelle Dumitrescu, and today I'm going to be talking about how to teach students to change behaviors through self-monitoring. Uh, the reason why I chose this topic is I think it's important for students to be involved in their um, growth. And by uh, acknowledging and being a part of self-monitoring, I think it can be a really good way to become more aware of what a student needs to work on, where a student is going, and what they're achieving. Um, it teaches students to measure one's uh, target behavior and compare it to external standards. So it's an effective tool for behavioral change, and basically it involves a rating scale, a checklist, a frequency count. Um, there is an optional reward system for it, uh, periodic checks, and one thing that I really like about it is that it gradually is discontinued. So once progress is starting to head in the right direction, um, this self-monitoring program is gradually discontinued. Now, this would fall into tier one to start off with. Um, if this did not progress and the student was not progressing, um, then it would graduate until um, tier three. Um, as the book suggested, there's the student, Kelsey, who was having behavioral and academic um, problems. Um, so I think that if the self-monitoring was not working, then uh, through tier three, um, they may need additional behavioral support. They may need the support team and more individualized supports and assessments to determine why the student is having these behaviors. So the self-monitoring uh, would be tier one. If it wasn't resolved, um, more uh, stringent um, things would need to be set in place to determine what was going on with the student and that would move this student through and up to tier three. All right, thank you very much.